The first thing that hits you as you approach the cave is the stench, an unpleasant uh, of mushrooms and rotting meat, whatever was nearby, you sense that it has not strayed far from its home. I've smelled better latrines. Uh, yeah, let's survey. The stench from the cave is familiar. It reminds you of an adventure uh, when you were just a young woman serving in the Queen's Guard. Camping in Trolltooth Pass? No, further south than that. What was it? Two hideous slime zombies have emerged from the goo. A slime beast, uh, meanwhile, launches itself at you with its powerful hind legs. I need to stop being cautious and maybe not uh, surveying murk, murky things or uh, hi hiding in fucking walls. Okay, he's gonna walk there, he's gonna walk there, he's gonna walk there, so... Let us attack this area. Oh, these guys can attack. I wonder if I can do that. Oh, I can! Well, I, this, I learned something. Okay, so this guy is... So I'm gonna go here. Gonna attack this guy. We're clashing. I apparently won that. Hmm. Hmm. I was really hoping I can get two with one strike. God. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm not I'm not paying attention as well as I should. So I'm gonna move here. I'm gonna attack this one again. With the hopes that I kill it. Kinda of worked. Hmm. Try piercing strike. Okay, not bad. Can't move diagonally. So I'm gonna move here. And I'm gonna move up. And we're just gonna attack this guy. And he's dead. Should I do another piercing strike or just a regular attack? Damn it. So he's gonna move there. So I'm gonna attack there. Go here. Piercing strike. Move here. Move here. And then regular attack. And hopefully I... Ooh, nope. Poisoned! God damn. Uh, no, that's a... I'll move. Okay. I think it's gonna be harder to live than I think it will. Because I am not doing well with these fights. The creature's dead, you wipe the disgusting ichor that passes for their blood from your weapon and investigate. Apart from the sticky pools of acidic slime and various mounds of other, uh, altogether more unpleasant material, there's nothing of interest here. Well. So, literally, I just wasted time. Awesome. Well. I guess we'll go this way, which is apparently where I should have gone. A little way along the pass, passing, uh, you come to what is clearly a sentry post. Oh, he looks asleep. You approach with caution and can see the orc in leather armor asleep at his post. I hope all of Zagor's minions are this lazy. This could be my quickest adventure yet. 
Uh, and carefully approach, I guess? As he is asleep, it should be no trouble for you to wake him so you can get some information. Hmm. I'm quite hurt, actually. Let's see what's in my inventory. Provisions. Okay. Yeah, let's try and interrogate the orc. You prod the orc awake with the pummel of your sword. He leaps to his feet, failing for his weapon, uh, which you swiftly click out of his reach. I am Alexandra of Black Sand. I seek the eye of the Cyclops. The orc seems to recognize you, or at least he recognizes your sharp sword and heavy armor. He does not speak the trade tongue, but his shrugging and sniveling make it clear that you are not going to get any useful information out of him. You tie him up and gag him. Okay. Well, that went better than I thought it would. Seems to be some dogs here. The passageway begins to widen until you enter a cave. However, blocking the cave's exit are two of the ugliest creatures you have ever seen. I don't know. They look like puppies. They have the proportions of dogs, but their hide is rough and scaly. Each beast is chained to the cave while secured to their uh, thick brass collars. The two orc hounds begin to snarl and strain at their chains. They cannot reach you, but their chains are long enough that should you approach, you will not be able to escape their uh, jaws. I've come across these poor creatures before on previous quests. Orcs generally don't treat them very well, which can make them quite vicious. You're going to have to deal with them quickly, uh, one way or another, before they attract the attention of an orc patrol. Or maybe something even worse. Okay, I wish I grabbed that uh, meat from earlier. Uh, can I distract them with food? Remembering your education on the Beasts of Time, you think back on the notes of orc hounds. Although vicious, they are easily distracted as long as you have the right treat. Mmm. Ah, uh, can I go back? I want to go back. Ah, oh, damn it. Fight the orc hounds. Let's see how this works. Damn it. I might have to double check the footage in this. Because I swear I rolled lower than the dog. Move down. Now let us attack. So I don't understand what determines... Uh, when a clash happens. Because we both attacked each other in the same square. So, but it didn't result in a clash. Uh, okay, so we have defeated the orc hounds. I sure grabbed that meat. And now I know better. So we can now rest here. Player, I would strongly advise sitting on this bench. <laughs> uh, so let's sit, see how much that gives us. And rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. So we got five out of that. Oh, it tells me. <laughs> uh, to your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear a raspy sound, which may be some sort of creature snoring. Open the door. Oh, looks like a bedroom. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the center of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. 
Judging by the remains of the Dorvan architecture, this room has not changed much from its original purpose, sleeping quarters for the Night Watch. Proving that your educated guest is correct, you see a green-skinned orc asleep on a straw mattress. Well, we want the box. Uh, treading softly, you easily extract the wooden box from under the table. Your luck holds out as you easily back out of the room without waking the orc. Luck is a good trait. <laughs> you leave the room and open the box in the passage. Uh, a hidden compartment has been knocked loose, revealing a catch of gold pieces. This is also a, there is also a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. Oh. Uh, you release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway. Well, only one way to go now. Okay, well, there's probably nothing in there then, so let's open it. Another sleeping quarter. Door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There's a stale smell in the air. In the center of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far, uh, far corner of the room is straw. Well, we're going to open the box. There are carved runes in the box. Due to your excellent education, you can roughly translate these into snake surprise as you pick it up. Something rattles within. Why would you open it? <laughs> you open the lid and a small snakes pop out of the box, eager to bite your wrist. Achievement unlocked. Oh, peanut brittle. I don't wonder if you can read the box, why did you open it? Even though you are surprised, you managed to dodge them. I guess now we fight snakes. That is stupid. I... Mmm. Mmm. Okay, let's uh, see if I can attack this thing. So... I don't know how the rolling in this works. Maybe it adds my skill to the roll or something? Oh, let's just attack this again. Damn it! Man, they did not like that table. Okay, is it going to come down or is it attacking there? That's the question. Or it attacked me. Okay, cool. Three. Okay, I won that and I definitely rolled lower than that unless the dice... Hmm. I would assume the dice on this end would be attached to me and the dice over here would be attached to this one. Hmm. Snakes are harder to understand what they're doing. Aha! Um, fuck you, snake. Stupid snakes. The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snakes, and out of it falls a, a has a fallen a key which you take. Sagor's key found. Yeah, that's a place to keep it. What snakes? Dick. The stale, dirty room does not seem to have any more secrets to hide. You decide to continue to head deeper into the orc's barracks. The tunnel turns eastward and then splits. I can go north where there's another room, or east where there looks like there's pillows. Uh, north. I should get, like, dice with the directions a compass directions on them and roll them uh, further up the passage on the west wall you see another wooden door you listen at the door and hear the worst singing you have ever heard in your life well we need to investigate that well, this is a lovely room the do door opens to reveal a small room the room is dirty and unkept a straw mattress lies in one corner and in the f far corner a flight of steps leading out of the chamber. In the center of the room is a wooden table upon which a candle burns lightly, the room, uh, lighting the room with its flickering flame. A small box rests under the table as 
it seems to be in every fucking room. Uh, seated around the table are two small orcs uh, with watery skin dressed in leather armor. Oh, they look pleasant. They are drinking some sort of grog, and by the way they stagger to their feet on your arrival, you assume they are very drunk. I wonder if they know the whereabouts of the eye. Let's question them. They're drunk. You there, you command, pointing your sword at the or orcs. I seek the eye of the Cyclops. Where can I find it? One of the orcs speaks your language. Don't know about no eye of orc Cyclops. We're just having a quiet drink. The other orc waves his mace threateningly. At least it would be threatening if he could control it enough to work up a decent swing. Which he can't. Your lips curl in disgust. You leave the orcs to their drinking. Well, I hope they have a good day. So I can go north or I can go south. Let's keep going north. Uh, to do, I can go east or west. Uh, east. This looks promising over here. The passage leads into a square dungeon chamber. There are two doors in the eastern wall and two in the western wall. On the opposite side of the room, another passage leads away north. The first door to its right is well used, and putting your ear to the keyhole, you listen and hear a man screaming for help from the inside. Before deciding what to do next, you listen at the other doors as well. From behind the second door to the right, you hear a thumping sound on the wall on the wood. Hello? Hello? Not funny. Open the door. The first door to the left is made of solid metal. Listening at the door, you hear the sound of tortured screams coming from within. Putting your ear to the second door to the left, you hear nothing. The eye of Cyclops is unlikely to be in a dungeon cell, but you never know. Open the first door to the right. Try the second door to the right. Open the first door on the... Hmm. I already forget which goes to which. The first door to the right is well used. Okay, let's go with the first door on the right. You unbolt the door and swing it open. A uh, nauseating sense hits your nostril. Inside the room, the floor is covered with bones, rotting vegetation, and slime. A wild-haired old man clothed in rags rushes at you, screaming. Oh, God. Poor buddy. His beard is long and gray. He is waving an old wooden chair leg. Is he sim simply insane as he appears, or has there been some kind of trap? Uh, I'm gonna try to tell him to sh calm the fuck down. You shout, you are freed, old man, at the top of your voice. Instantly, his ranting cease. He stops dead in his tracks and sinks to the floor, weeping loudly. Alexandria of Black Sand, finally a familiar face. You have my internal gratitude. As he gradually composes himself, he thanks you many times. Many years ago, he was an adventurer like you in the search of the warlock's treasure. He was captured by the orcs and thrown into the, his solitary cell as sort of a pet for the creatures. Oh god, that sucks. This must be the Aaron Degar that I've heard about. There have been many tales told of this great warrior. Sadly, his time in confinement has not been kind to him. You ask the man about the Eye of the Cyclops. His memory is poor after so long in isolation. But he says he has heard of such a thing, rumors of an immense gem powering an evil construct which draws life from demonic power. I always thought it was just a superstitious rumor, though. Plus one luck! Leave the cell. Eh. Uh, let's go with the thumping. Oh, this doesn't look good. As you approach the door, the banging gets louder and the bolt starts to shake. Come on, Gert! Let out! 
waking up. Uh, sliding back the rusty bolt and opening the door, you come face to face with a panicked looking goblin with a horrific creature closing in behind it. Slime beast, slime beast, run! squeaks the panicked goblin and lashes out at you. The toad like slime beast joins in on the fray, opening its wide mouth. It is full of long spiked teeth. Fight the monsters! Okay. I wonder if this is a three-way fight. Well, let's attack. Okay, so I guess my skill gets added to the roll. That's what it seems like. It takes forever for the dice to roll, but once they do finally finish rolling, they disappear so quick. I can do piercing strike, but that might be uh, that might not be worth it. So we'll move here. Oh, damn it! Damn it! Yes. Okay, so twenty-two versus fifteen. Okay. I'm slowly learning the combat system. You have defeated the monsters. Initially, it looks as though there is nothing of value in the slime beast cell. However, upon a second glance, you notice a blue candle sitting in the muck. muck. Well, let's take it. Although it is an odd place for a candle, you decide to take it with you. It may come in handy in one of the darker areas of the mountain. You put it in your backpack. 